Good evening, everybody. Happy Sunday to all of you. Welcome to the Upset Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Latasha Hewitt, and I would dare come here alone. I'm here with the crew. Hello, Upsetters. Hey, hey, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, family. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Go (laughs) ahead right now and share uh, this broadcast. If you're watching on Facebook, share the link with someone on YouTube and let someone know if you're listening to the podcast. We really appreciate all of our listeners and our viewers, and we're happy that you joined us. All right, guys. So, um, hmm, what's new? (laughs) Let's <laughs> just let's put it that way. What's I hate to talk about this because this was our last show and I hated our last show. But did you see the picture of the little baby that they put a rifle on his little lap and they said, train up a child in the way that he should go? Mercy. Did y'all see that? Mm. Mercy. No. no, it was ridiculous. Remember, we were just talking about the fetish about guns and, and they just won't let it go. I mean, they just put it in the little baby so that it, it was like um, they were training the kids so that when they got 18, they could purchase their own guns. Wow, mm-hmm. 18. Mm-hmm. They don't wait that long sometimes. And then they use the scripture, train up a child in the way that he yeah. should go. That was terrible. Starts early. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I thought, I thought Marlene, I thought you loved last last week's show. Everybody's talking about how great you were in it, but it, it was... <laughs> Who said that? It wasn't. I didn't see that, and I know it wasn't you. No, absolutely. <laughs> it was just a sad content, you know. Just, yeah. Just it was heavy. Why, why is this our yeah. reality? Very, very dark. It was dark. Yeah. I was going to talk about something that happened yesterday on Saturday, but instead, I'm going to go a little bit further back than that, and and talk about the. Uh, you know what's been happening in uh, in the city of Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you notice that everybody talked about Philadelphia and their shootings, but hardly a word was mentioned about Chattanooga? Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, we we did yeah. because I said it was some other shooting, and there was one yeah. in Virginia. I saw Chester, Virginia. It was yeah, like but, I mean, yeah. I mean, but what I'm I, the point I guess I'm getting at is oh, the news you're talking about the news. The, yeah, the way the news cycle treats right. this stuff and. Mm-hmm. And it continually it, it, take a notice the next time you see the news, when they talk about a shooting or a murder, it won't be about people. It'll be about uh, impact and effect, uh, a bloody shoe or or, uh, you know, a bloody bed or something like that. Or, you know, mm-hmm. what they want to do is they want to show you the catastrophe and, yep. and the drama It has nothing to do with people or cures or even causes hmm. they just want they want to sell you the sizzle not the steak mm-hmm. and Mercy. and we're Mercy. falling prey yes. to that yeah. you see that with monkeypox too you know that's in the news every oh. time you see monkeypox in the news it's always a black hand or it's always hmm. it's something like as though it's coming from africa or something of that nature so well, you I, know. I, get you with, well, well, so. <laughs> I mean it didn't come from scandinavia <laughs> yeah, either way it goes they, they ain't got no polar bear pox that i know about <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I still love you. <laughs> hey, but did you guys also see? Did you also see from the Uvalde that 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 one mother got to the school and she wanted to go in to get her yeah. her yeah. children yeah. and they yeah. wouldn't yeah. let her go yeah. and she right. got in and she, and she said none mm-hmm. of y'all are in this school and she got her two children out. out yep. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. did you see that? They could have saved some of those children. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, I'd sue the police. I'd sue the backup police. Oh, I'd sue the city. I'd sue everybody. Hey, this, this is why we're the upset podcast. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know if this is something that will upset our, our fans and our community, but, you know, Ted Wilson was recently reelected as the oh, good, president oh, of the General me. Conference of Seventh Day Adventists. That was last Tuesday, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. recent news. Yeah. Recent news. Yeah. Mm. And what is this? His fourth term, third, fourth? What was it? It's a third dynasty. Third. It's a dynasty. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, I would not work for an organization that that did that. Yeah, there are no term you limits wouldn't. for that. You wouldn't. <laughs> you, you just Thus, did. I'm retired, right? Two. Times two, he just did. So my understanding is that he only has, I mean, since he's already, you know, they delayed the session for two years. So technically he only has three years left of this term. Yep. It's, it's sad. But it's without limitations though. So he could be, be. I think you have to change that nominating committee. It's sad. You know, I remember the voice of a woman crying in the wilderness saying that the church should never allow itself to give in to kingly power. I remember that. What was that hmm. woman's name, Pat? Um, I I don't know. I'm ba- I'm Baptist uh, <laughs> today. You know, it's it's 
You know, and I'm this is, has nothing to do with his his abilities or right. his person, because my understanding is that he is a Christian gentleman. That is the only understanding I've ever mm -hmm. gotten. But right. but the, you, you have to turn over the soil. You have to yeah. refresh the leadership. And, and it, it, you know, it would be nice if the gentleman would say, you know, I've had my time. Yeah. And, right. and now, you know, but to, to hold on to it like this. You know, I'm a, I, I, I don't usually do this, but check uh, Christian Josiah, Pastor Christian Josiah's page a couple of uh a couple of days back and and you will see that that the north american division is a small piece of the world pie yeah and yeah, what, what needs to happen yeah what needs to happen is that there needs to be more uh, sy uh synergy uh between all the divisions and all the conferences around the world to actually understand what's going on yeah we got uh, the pockets they got the people yeah, that's it's a try. Yeah. Well put, and, well put. Yeah. So and very few of us really care. I mean, when you think about it, um, you know, I was seeing some commentary online and pretty much the local church really doesn't see the world leaders being relevant to what they're doing. So they're not really engaged in, you know. They, yeah, that, that's why Nick quit. Yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> you know, that's how that's how the church is about everything. They just yeah. you know, it's true. Yeah, just, they don't see the direct impact. About Jesus. They don't don't care about anything else. The, Mm -hmm. Well, you know, institutions institutions exist to continue their existence. I'm sorry, Charles. No, I agree with you. That that's a good that's a good line. No, I just wanted to share the thing that was um, occupying my thoughts. Um, hold on, in, in current wait. events. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not that bad. No, about the the ripple effect that the. Um, the Ukrainian and uh, Russian war is having on food supplies. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And, yes. and there, there is a famine occurring as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are uh, tens of thousands of people, uh, mostly children, that's subject to die from uh, malnutrition and not enough food. I mean, that's actually happening real time. That's not, well, we think in a year. No, it's, yeah. it's actually mm. happening right now. And it's a very, very sad, and it should get the the headlines. Yeah. yeah. Um, so because sad. I mean, how does how does a world, how do the Western nations, just let people die because they can't eat? Mm. It's, it's a terrible commentation commentary. Mm. So you know that that needs to go to the top of the prayer list uh, because these oh. are people. They they just can't help. You know, they don't have the help. They don't have the food. Um, there are people are selling. <laughs> I know this sounds really weird. It's selling their relatives. Mercy. Oh yeah. Be to buy food. So selling them into slavery is that what that is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, it's it's terrible. But that that could be a, a whole show. But I just think yeah. that um, you know you need to take that as a matter of prayer and help in any way you can. I mean, prayer and action. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. sign up with World Vision. I'm on. Mm -hmm. Trying to feed at least mm -hmm. one child. Yeah, you know it's it's yeah. amazing. Uh, there's something perverted about the mathematics of of priorities. We can't feed children. We can't feed children. We we just paid thirteen billion dollars for one aircraft carrier. Right. You mm -hmm. know we we are buying a, a plane mm -hmm. that costs thirty million dollars. Uh, I forget how much. No, no, twenty some thousand dollars per hour to operate or a million dollars. Mm -hmm. I forget how much, mm -hmm. but the, the business of being able to destroy human lives is a very expensive yeah. business. And mm -hmm. we never, oh, it's profitable. Yeah. yeah. And we never have very to have gross. a bake sale to get it done. Mm -hmm. You ever notice that? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. There's a lot of money put for, yeah. put up for war. Yeah. 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 Well, well, yeah, as we can see, there's a lot going on as always. Um, however, we do want to now transition to our topic for today yeah um, go right ahead gp so, what are we discussing unless you're living you under a rock today? unless you're living under a rock you Come are out. aware that it is graduation season tasha can you make me big there you go thank you very much make it's me graduation large. season and the ceremonies have begun and the commencement speakers are encouraging them and commending them for enduring what has been the most unpre unprecedented experience for many of our students, uh, being virtual learners and having events canceled, uh, dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. But 
you know, if you have somebody you know who has recently graduated, please affirm them, celebrate them. We want to congratulate the, the awesome class of 2022. This is but, my cousin right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the left. Black <laughs> one. Yeah, of course. But, you know, as sweet as the milestone of graduating college is, uh, there's a sour reality that they have to wrestle with. And it's a two-worded question from Lottie Dottie and everybody. And that question is, what's next? What's mm -hmm. next? What are you going to do next? Yeah. Congratulations. But, mm -hmm. but, what's next? If you answer, I'll be minding my business, they won't give you any money. So you have to be <laughs> polite. But the reality is many graduates wrestle with this question. And many folks go to the military. Many folks enter the workforce. Many folks decide to go to an institution of higher learning because that's what you got to do to be successful, right? True that. Path to the American dream. Go hmm. to school, go to college, get more knowledge, get a good job, J-O-B, which is the unofficial acronym for just, just over broke. 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 Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> but after cramming in college, after, you know, landing that dream job and getting that cushy salary and gaining your independence and launching into adulthood, uh, maybe you'll, you know, eventually buy a car and celebrate that accomplishment. I know getting your grown and sexy on or maybe if you're really lucky, you might even buy a house and, you know, be a homeowner and have some assets that you could grow over time. But the reality is you may have the dream job, you may have the car, you may have the house, but there's this other person called Auntie Sally May and her whole <laughs> crew of greedy cousins. I know her very well. After you like a shark chasing after blood. And this is not the Shark Tank that many of us signed up for, but 43.4 million borrowers have federal student loans with a total amount of debt of $1.7 trillion, y'all. Wow. Somebody yeah. please wow. go Trillion. remind President Biden of his promise. But many folks oftentimes are quick to question the necessity of college. Is it relevant today? And we're not here to bash college. We believe that it has value and we all have college degrees, but today we aspire to have an honest discussion and we pray that you will think about some of the alternatives and options that you might have after you graduate college. And so Upsetters, let's dive into the conversation. Question number one, what is the history of higher education? Wow. Hmm. That's a, well, that's a well, show all by itself. Well done, thy <laughs> um, good and faithful servant. Well done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice opening there. Yeah. Man. Uh, well, I, you know, I just look at it from a holistic point of view. Um, we really need to put our educational system under a magnifying glass and look at it very closely. Um, higher education 50, 60, 70 years ago was nothing like it is today. Mm hmm. hmm affordability, accessibility, all of those things. Then there's the question of course study. What are you studying? Are you regurgitating somebody else's thoughts or are you learning how to think on your own? Mm. So there's so many facets to this and then cost a course, uh, ultimately um, ending at the enormous debt that so many young people are, are under. Um, our system, I guess, in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, just to wrap up my opening comments, the, the system is broken. Mm. The educational system is broken and, uh, we need to look at it from a different way. And it's been forced to change because of technology. So you got a lot of people saying, you know what, I'll just take some online courses, <laughs> you know, yeah. get an internship or something. And I, I can't, you know, I can't be uh, bothered with the, the traditional, the traditional educational system. And then, and, and of course you could, you know, you can point out people who started college and never finished college, but some of the mm -hmm. most successful and wealthy people in the world, you know, you got Steve Jobs. Uh, he never finished Stanford, um, went on to to create Apple along with yep. Steve Wozniak. Uh, and there are others you can, you can you know, have a list. And, and some of the re some of the the popular reasons why those kinds of things um, occurred is because 
those deep thinkers, those on the edge geniuses felt that what they were learning in the classroom was not really helping them mm. for a future. Right. So it, it's complex and, yeah. you know, and basically it rolls, it boils down to what you make it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I think back to when I went to college, uh, my, my father died when I was 17 and my, my mother wanted to see us go through and how much we struggled and, and I thought about it, you know, because we had to figure out how to pay for the tuition cost. It cost us nine hundred dollars every quarter. Oh wow! <laughs> Trying oh, to figure. Yeah, so I mean, twenty eight, right around twenty eight hundred, three thousand dollars a year. That was just a massive amount of money back in nineteen seventy four. But it do, it pales into insignificance. Right. Yes. When you talk right. about the fact that if you try to send your child to one of Oakwood. the blue chip institutions today you know yeah mm -hmm. i mean what, what's oakwood now per per year about thirty thousand a year thirty thousand dollars a year which <laughs> is which is less than it cost me for the four years that i was there and so it is becoming you know and you know your children they want to go and they want to study something esoteric like you know underwater basket weaving or you, you know <laughs> uh, you know, water basket. We wow, and and then they come out and they're making you know twenty five thousand dollars a year, and they, yeah. we have to figure something else out. You know, yeah. Cost of education is is really it's it's really the major focus. You know, it's like anything else that has been um, private privatized uh, over the years. Schools increasingly became. Uh, privatized. Uh, yep. One of one of my favorite lecturers who talks he's in his nineties now. Uh, grew up in Philadelphia and went to school in Philadelphia. And he said he went to the University of Pennsylvania and his tuition was a hundred dollars. What year was that? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, year keep one. in mind now he were they he's dinosaurs in his, or <laughs> he's in his nineties. No, oh. no, no, he was in his nineties. He's in his nineties now, and wow. he said when he went to school. In Philadelphia, he attended University of Pennsylvania. His tuition was one hundred dollars. Wow. You go look it up. You can you can, you can mm, <laughs> look yeah. it up in the history. And as you know, even public education, as it becomes more privatized, the more expensive it becomes. Yeah, and, and the reality is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll say this real quick. And they teach you now that your bachelor's degree is not enough. It's equivalent mm -hmm. to a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. So they push you to get your master's degree, which makes it their greater cost and education longer and more, 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 more money. And now and your master's, master's degree. degree. Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I just wanted to mention, um, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention historically back black colleges and universities when, when there was a time in the nation where we didn't have access to get an education when pretty much if you didn't go to college, mm -hmm. you didn't have access to information. And so, you know, shout out to all the HBCUs, my HBCU, Oakwood University, operating since 1896. Yeah. That's when I went. And yeah. taking us <laughs> from lower, 1896. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 2009, but I'm grateful for HBCUs and for what they have done, for what they continue to do. But listen, <laughs> college and higher ed was once free, but over time, it has gone mm -hmm. from fee free to fee to extremely <laughs> expensive, right? And mm -hmm. so, obviously, higher ed is a business in the education sector. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a business. Let's let's establish that it's a business, and they mm -hmm. are effective. They help you. Yes, you get a degree. But what are some of the realities in the twenty first century that cause people to question the necessity or relevance of higher education? Living in the information age, why are people so, I don't want to say hell-bent, but why, why are they against college now? I think you guys have mentioned it. I mean, people are looking at the amount of money they're spending on a college education, what they will earn once they're done. <laughs> and they're, they're looking at how, wow, you know, I've just spent thousands of dollars on an education. And based on what I'm earning, I only have enough to really support myself, uh, let alone pay this bill for whatever, 30, for some it's 25, 30 years. And so it, education then becomes a financial burden. Um, for a lot of people and they're weighing and you're like maybe if I just went to a trade school or I went somewhere yeah. else 
I can right. come out with a skill set that will earn me twice as much as what my college degree gave me. And I won't have this debt. I won't be sh shouldering so much debt on top of it. So it's like, I think yeah. people are like hip to the game. Like you were saying that this is a business and I have to decide if I want to be part of this business or if I want to make this thing work for me in my life. Right. Yeah. Well, I think also the, the, depending on the course of study, the discipline, uh, some people have, have found out that after four years in school, by the time you get out of school, what you've learned is already obsolete. Yeah. Right. Depending on depending on the you know the discipline, because there are, there are some that it's part of the course to remain up to date and with the latest. But yeah, that's part yeah. of the argument there. I know when the last time my my toilet didn't flush, I I didn't call somebody who could discuss with me the nuances of existential thought from Schopenhauer. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I called this guy who had his pants down around his hips so that when he bent over to fix it, I, I saw all of his history. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and one of the reasons why people are discussing the value of college is because expertise now is is fluid and marketable. I mean, yeah, you don't have to get it from a guy who went to school eight years to get it. You can get it online. You can get right. it, you know, and, and so people realize that you and, and I'll be really honest with you. My what college did was it prepared me to learn. It didn't tell me everything I needed to know. It prepared me to learn. Mm. And and most of my life has been lived doing stuff that I learned while I was doing stuff already. And college prepares you, but you don't necessarily have to have a degree. And check this mm -hmm. out, folks. A state a state degree is twenty seven thousand dollars per year. State college. Private college is $55,000 a year, which means when you get out of college, you will be paying somewhere between $110,000 and $224,000 for your four-year college degree. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot. You know. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to say. Is the payoff worth it? Um, right. Now, I believe in higher education. I, I do. Um, but... When you get out of school, one, can you find a job in your field? Mm -hmm. Number two, will you be paid equi equitably? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you already know your cousins are going to get paid way more than you. Cousins. And so you're doing the same work. Cousins. You're doing the same work and you don't get the same pay. Cousins. And so here, Cousins. you know, we all came from the same too. You know, uh, and so you don't get the same, <laughs> you know, you don't even have enough money now to pay off your 100000 So, I mean, you know, they are teaching that there are other ways to survive and survive well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, there are people that go into computer science and they get certifications. Yeah. And get good, good, and get good jobs. Good As job. a matter of That's fact, uh, coding and yeah. programmers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. could, if you're and good and you're certified. Cyber security. Yeah. Right. I read an article once where a a coder. Uh, this was about three, four years ago. A coder got a certification and got a job at Google with a starting salary of eighty thousand dollars a year. Mm. Or yeah. as we call it in administrative ministry, a finishing salary. <laughs> <laughs> he said a finishing. And I, and I mean, you know, I remember uh, watching my dad. My dad, and he, I could say this, um, he doesn't mind. My dad has, uh, I think they call it third form education in the Caribbean or whatever. Came over, he went to Canada and got a uh, dra uh, uh, something like a um, a trade. In a trade, he went to trade school. I think it was like eighteen months or something like that, and learned to do refrigeration. Mm -hmm. Um, um, uh, worked in the same place for thirty-five years. Mm -hmm. Same place, same hospital, uh, blood banks, all of those types of. And his side gigs, I would go to go with him, to, you know, to watch him do his side gigs. And you go, he's pulling money out of side gigs. You know what I mean? Uh, fixing refrigerators, air conditions, hot days, whatever. Uh, if my dad is watching this uh, right now, you know, we had we had an air conditioner man, but our air conditioners never worked at our house. So I, mean, <laughs> it, I remember it was like a year before going to Oakwood. Um, I said to my dad, I didn't want to go to school. Mm. I wanted to do what he's doing. Mm. Mm. And Aww. it was almost like he. No, Marlena is almost <laughs> like I cursed. That was sweet. Mm. Not cussed. He's only going to the first in the house. I mean, he was like, oh, no, you ain't doing this type of work. Uh, I, I can't have you do this type of work. And 
and I wonder where I would be right now if I have done if I did his work, his type yeah. of work. We think about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you would have had your own refrigeration company. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about that, Nick. What you just said. <laughs> But the, the other side of it is that, honestly, when I think about, uh, the, you know, we always think about hands work, but you got radiation therapy. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? We, you know, I know we kind of think about things like that. And I was looking up and you got nuclear medicine technologists, dental hygienists, you know, yeah. there are those that, that they need, but don't don't have to get that. Um, that dental mask. hygienists have a four year degree. Do they really? Yeah. But yeah. They have, I don't think they have, is it four years or two years? I think it's four two. years. Is it dental right? hygienists, I, they I, were, I, listen, I, at Old Dominion, that was de dental hygienist, medical technologist, four-year yeah. degrees. Oh, yeah. oh well, yeah. I, I thought and they were, let's put this way, they're trained. My wife was a medical technologist, and she and, an, and a nuclear technologist, four years plus, yeah, I remember that. Well, you oh, call them yeah. a trade buddy, they're going to be um, well, 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 doing some <laughs> backlash at our broadcast I was preaching, <laughs> broadcast this, here. I, I was preaching this Sabbath, and, and you, when you... It, I have to start, I've started saying things like, I stopped saying you need to be a doctor to be successful. You need to be a lawyer. We, we use those two terms all the time, doctors, lawyers, yeah. to say that, you know, that's where success is. Now I'm saying- You don't things, say preacher? Um, <laughs> I say teachers, because we still need teachers. <laughs> but, 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 but one of the things that I said to them is, and there's a kid right now who can code. This, you know, I, I made that statement. There's a kid that can code right now uh, uh, that that someone is looking to buy uh, whatever he puts together that can pay for tuition for your your your, your students. At. And, and people kind of giggle at that because we're not we're not there yet to recognize that we don't. It's the demand of what the world wants that we should be paying attention to and and not the the degree. No, who, who, no one really cares about the degree anymore because you're right about that. If my plumbing goes bad, I, I don't need a preacher to come fix it. Or I don't, mm. let, let me just say this other thing. And I hope I'm wrong about this, but I could remember this, that two year preachers, they used to, Oakwood used to um, uh, kick out two year preachers. Then it moved to four years, mm -hmm. right? It used to be, right? And then after that, now they're saying that you can't get picked up without an MDiv. Well, well, I've been saying that for years. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, just think about. It. Wait. What, what you said, GV? The top conferences will take you because they're desperate. <clears throat> yeah, but the books saying <laughs> now, or they're saying now that he said if you're desperate, yeah, that you need that. Let me just give you a great example why it it pulls up into what I say. Pace Fordham. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I just I was thinking of him just now. Yep. Pace Fordham. Yeah. I remember Pace Fordham deciding that he's gonna, and we could talk about him. You know, we always. He decided he didn't want to go to school, just like basketball, coming out of high school, but coming out of college and decide that he wants a church right away or he's going to deal with getting a church right away. Immediately, my mind was like, nah, go to school. You know, a church is a church is a church is a church. But he wanted to get in the field right now. Now, what do we say? Do we say mistake? Uh, yeah, that's what we said. Yeah, I, that's what we say again. I, yeah, mistake. Yeah. yeah. But I also feel that what if he? What if he's successful uh, uh, this early? Okay. But come on, Nick. It depends Nick. on what God is saying. If God is telling him to do it, then hey. I mean, okay. Let, let, let's stipulate that God talks, but let's talk about the, the hey, hey, that hey, we watch do know. it, watch it, Mister. Yeah. Supposed to listen to God's voice. <laughs> I, said, I said stipulate. I mean, in, in, <laughs> in law, that means we accept the fact that God speaks. But 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 the, the, when you look at it, uh, edu education. If somebody else is going to pay for it. Okay. At a time when okay. you are, are best suited to receive it and act upon it, it is a mistake not to take it. Now, it, it, it doesn't mean that it's going to go horribly for you. Sure. It might work out well, but I'm just saying from a matter of just measuring the logistics and the metrics. But Nick, if, what if that's the way we think? And what if th that's not the way they think? New generation, man. It's a new, it's a different, the, 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 the whole mindset is different. But young, the young generation has been stupid a long time. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a part of Even it. Even when I we was were there. Stupid. Yeah. I, I didn't want to go to Andrews. <laughs> they, they made me go, you know, and, and it is the best decision that I made. I, I mean, yeah. I didn't want to go okay. because I just knew that if God would let me loose on the world, mm -hmm. that, you know, I would convert half of America, the other half would die and the Lord would come the next year. 
and and I had to learn otherwise. GP, GP, let me share this with you. Let me let me share this with you guys real quick. Ten years I've been in youth ministry, hiring uh, young people to work for scholarships, right? For mm -hmm. scholarships. In those ten years, we still give them the same junk money anyway, which they've all, which is true because the, the tuition is going up, but what we giving them still remains the same. Doesn't make sense to me. That was a uh, that was a dig, but we'll we'll get into it later. And, but here's the thing. We now give uh, we're now giving them the option of taking the scholarship in their hand or walking away with the cash. Wow. What do you what do you think they cash? Yeah, cash. Cash is fungible. Scholarships ain't. You know, if I die next <laughs> week, you know, the right. scholarship will still be on the table. But right. I could have spent that cash. That's you know? right. Yeah. That's right. They're because we 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 are we are existential. We are people of the moment. We want to do it now. And so mm -hmm. You know. And I just want to say, I agree with Nick about the education for the, the young preacher to be, but it doesn't have to go in the same order. You mm. see what I'm saying? If God is calling him now, there's an opportunity and God has opened doors, then, you know, he can go through the door, but continue, you know, education along the way. So that is another option. And one, one thing that um, I see that is really being pushed now is owning your own business. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so because, you know, mm -hmm. pay is so, you know, unequal that the best thing for us to do is own your own business. Whatever it is that you do, you be the boss. You I be in charge. I tried that. I tried that. But the conference said, no, this is our church. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I got a career in radio. But uh... <laughs> yeah, Nick, you, you have around. to choose something else to be the boss. Of. <laughs> oh, oh. But but again, they have you know. I wanted to share also with everybody that they, they have like career testing. Uh, you can get it in three phases. You know, you can get it mm -hmm. in high school. You can get it when you're already in college, and even after. Uh, there's assessments for those who are just not happy with where they are right now and think that there may be something else that's out there for them. You know, I I I know what I would have said if my son came back in high school and said, "Dad, this thing says I'll be a great electrician." I said, you got to go to Andrews. You got to go to so-and-so. You got to go to this school. You Electricians make good money. No, I, I, it has, it's, 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 uh, it, it, it's not, it's really not about the money. Oh, no, you, you want the prestige. No, no, no. Yeah, just coming at him, coming at him, <laughs> No, I'm asking because you said he wanted to be an electrician, and he's like, no, I was. <laughs> no, I mean, if he wanted to be an electrician, I would want him to go to a school of higher learning to not just know how to put the wires together, but to know what, you know, the fundamentals of it, et cetera, yeah. you know, um, and, and so um, you're talking about electrical engineering. That's why you're talking. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you know, there's, you know, there's an old saying that the, a man who knows how will always find work, but the man who knows why will be bossing the jerk. And, mm -hmm. and, and wow. it appears that that's where Pat is saying, you know, understand mm -hmm. the why behind the what, and, and, and that's what college, and continuing education does it, it helps you to 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 become a theorist and and to understand i mean for example anybody can learn how to preach but when you go to the seminary you actually learn how to think the thoughts of god after him oh i'm i'm invoking my gardener taylor now <laughs> and, and so, okay, yeah. i love him by the way i love them oh okay. love them. but but you're right about that like i remember preaching and someone coming to me and saying to me, oh, I know all those tools. I know how, yeah. I know how to use all those tools. I say, okay, you may know how to use all those tools. And, 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 and it's really not about the preaching and preacher side of it. There is, there is a scientific thing towards pastoring and preaching. And there are some things that you learn from experience from someone else. Isn't that what school is about anyway? You have a teacher who's actually mm -hmm teaching you about the research of 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 of, of yeah. the past so i agree with it gp but i also feel that the young people the young people now are just like yo i want it on my own and i don't i don't need a piece of paper for someone to tell me how and and that's what we're that's where we're at right now so let me ask this question so what are some alternatives and options that our high school graduates can consider 
or explore some practical options that, that live with mom and dad. dad. You can live with mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always the, the military, you know, the, sure. you know, going into the armed forces, and uh-huh. because a lot they pay. So a lot of times they pay for your education. And, that um, GI Bill. Yep. 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 And um, and homes and, and your homes. Yeah. You can advance while taking advantage of a lot of those perks, and you don't always have to go into combat. I know some people are like, "Oh, I don't want to go." Um, you know, there are civilian things that civilian jobs that you can have. So that's an option, particularly for those who want to, um, <clears throat> you know, increase their education, but may not have the finances or don't want the debt. Um, of course, they have other obligations associated with that, but that is a viable option. Yeah, and someone might stone me for this, but. Some people might need a gap year because yeah. Yeah. everybody does not know what they want to do for the rest of their life exactly. when they're 17 Wasting or 18. Years old. Yep. And yeah. so before you jump into those loans head first, you might you might benefit from just pausing and thinking about what are my gifts? How do I feel God has wired me and how can I make the best impact in the world while making an income before you make that decision? Yeah. And I like what um, Chuck was talking about, those two year, you know, technological d- degrees. I mean, you do exceptionally well, you know, especially if you're techie, you don't want to be in school a long time. That is an excellent option. Yeah. I wonder what the narrative would be. What is the narrative of those countries where college is free? Mercy. It's a good point. You come right out of right out of high school and you can mm-hmm. choose to go to a four year college. What is the narrative there? What are those young people thinking? Are they thinking about houses and cars and big, or are they thinking about a calling? Mm-hmm. That's good. What they really want to do. That's true. You bring up a good point because a lot of times people are chasing the high paying careers. They're, they mm-hmm. want to be the doctors. They want to be lawyers, not recognizing firsthand that this is going to require more and more school, which is more and more money, more and more debt. And then they realize they don't even like it. So they they go through all these years and realize, I didn't want to be a doctor. I hate law. Um, But they were following the path of short success. Right. And then they realize this is not meaningful to me. Yeah. And they go a whole nother course. And Mm -hmm. you're like, if they had just taken a story, think about it. Read an article about a lawyer who just was sick and tired of the lawyer business, uh, Mm -hmm. the lying and the, (laughs) the cheating. Uh, not saying that all lawyers lie and cheat, but some lawyers <laughs> lie and cheat. You um, just lost some audience they're, there. <laughs> they're professional, they're professional up. at it. <laughs> but what he went on to do, he, he went to learn how to drive a big rig, and he said he'd never been happier in oh, his whole life. Oh, it's like being free on the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he said he made he didn't make as much money, but he felt he that he – it was, it was, yeah, it's a fulfillment. It's like mm-hmm. the hard work I put into driving this truck. What I get is, you know, I've worked for it and I worked hard and it's honest, you know, okay. So I'm not suggesting everybody go out to truck driving school, yeah. but yeah. you know what? You, you're on the highway and you see those big rigs and they're hauling around your oh, food yeah. and hauling yeah. around your medical mm-hmm. surprise. And how, oh, yeah. okay, you can think, you can think lowly of them. Oh, no, no. Lowly, but let them let well. let them park but, those trucks and see what happens. Yeah, but the, the the difference is, and this is where college, where people speak of college, college uh, is supposedly preparing you for a career and being paid for what you know, as compared to what you do. Mm. Uh, I mean, because when you when you're 60 years old and you're jumping up on that rig, and and you're riding part partner, partner's a guy named Arthur, last name Ritus. <laughs> then, you, then you say to yourself, you know, gee, I, I wish I'd gotten that degree that would allow me to sit at a desk and, you know, do things. And, and so, Well, now, now, on the other hand, uh, some years ago, read an article about a retired school teacher, female, mm-hmm. in her 50s. She's now driving a rig mm. and loving it. Nice. So yeah. I, what I'm saying yeah. is do different what you strokes, love. different yeah. folks. Yeah, you know, right, right. different stroke. And I think the word calling should apply to other lines of work instead of ministry. Sure. Yeah. There are some people yeah. who are doing non clergy, non ministry things, and they felt called to do that work. Yep. That's right. Yeah. yeah. This podcast mm-hmm. is being sponsored by the Chuck Williams Truck Driving. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you tired of your job? Do you feel a need for adventure on the road? Call the Chuck Williams School. But I, I do drive. want to say this. I, I know you're about truck to go. truck driving daddy with a van load. Oh, now, you know what? You're going to get some negative stuff from truck drivers. You want. Yeah. I, how dare you? you know? They're going to rip his name off that shirt. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, I, I do want to say, and I, and I did hear an article about this. Do what you love to do. No matter mm-hmm. what it is, it may not be as high and prestigious as some other job, but it's, it's been said how people have gone to school for things that had no fulfillment and they were very sorry that they did it and they ended up going to the place that they love. But when you do something that you love to do, yep. you're going to continue when when the times get rough and yep. and maybe you can start your own business in it, you know, um, but definitely do what you love and not just yeah. what someone yeah, tells you to do. Yeah, be, 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 before we make the altar call, Marlena already got ahead of me. But if, if you had the opportunity to speak with every single high school graduate in America in one big, huge auditorium, what advice or wisdom or hacks would you share with them? Hacks. Did you say hacks? Mm. <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, I knew some people who did what they love to do. Some of them, uh, they love to eat and they found out when that didn't pay well. Uh, <laughs> they could own their own restaurant, Nick. Yeah, but I, I t- for example, I'll give you a good example. Ministers, we are called to minister. We don't always know what that means, but most of us at some point love handling the word of God, love you know preparing mm. sermons and all that. But we find out that that's not what pastoring is. That's uh, just a part of pastoring. Right. 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 Le- le- be with the people. You know, we love our children, but man, let me tell you, we so glad when them people leave, you know, and go somewhere. I mean, it's nice. It's a romantic thing to 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 do what you love. I do what I love. And but at the end of the day, you you're gonna have to find out also how to do what somebody will pay you for. Well, you know, right. and well, and that's an both? uneasy that's an uneasy battle. Sometimes you can. Mm-hmm. I have never had I have never had a job that wasn't fun, mm. ever. And I it's mean, probably I, because I, of I you, though. big pardon. It's probably because of who you are. I think. I mm-hmm. think the Lord just looked down and said, "If we don't protect this fool, he is doomed." Hey, <laughs> make you I laugh, mean, and you 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 made you made laugh about that. But that's, I believe that God put me in a place to save me. Uh, yes, that's what they teach. That's what they teach. I believe that. But pastoring, uh, I mean, I've retired from pastoring twice. I've I've worked in politics, which I always thought I would hate. You Loved just keep it. running from Jesus. Just keep. <laughs> Marlena, don't worry about Jonah. No, we'll you know, <laughs> but, you know, I think that um, that high schoolers, uh, young people, many more pressures on them than, than we had. Yeah, we were yeah, yeah. Many more psychological and emotional issues going on. But um, I think I would say that you need we need to look at the fact that this country is a culture of self. Mercy. True We're that. a culture of self. And getting past that will help a young person kind of open up to other possibilities, uh, college, no college, whatever. But, you know, we can get past culture of self because a lot of times we're making the wrong decisions because of selfishness. Mm. Right. Yeah. And I, I would add to that, too. You know, I've already been talking to my children about this. You know, they're 11 and 13. But I told them, uh, just so you know, I'm not. Go- we're not going to require you to go to college. Mm. I said the key is that you have a plan, meaning mm-hmm. you need to mm-hmm. give some thought into what it is you yes. want to do. Mm-hmm. Maybe based on what you want to do, college is the thing. Maybe if you want to start your own business, now we're talking about how are we how how are we going to build that startup money instead of me putting money aside for your college? Do I need to put it aside for you to launch your business? That's Mm -hmm. the case. You need to come up with your business plan. So my thing is, I want to facilitate whatever is going to make my children happy, but also be for them Mm -hmm. to be able to to provide themselves. So I would say to graduates. You know, you don't always have to follow because some of them get depressed or thinking, I don't want to go to college, but my parents are making me go to college. And they're so consumed by doing something they didn't want to do. They don't spend enough time thinking about what they really enjoy and how they can present a plan to your parents that may not include college, but is a mapped out system of how I can have this apprenticeship and learn this skill. And th- if you have a plan, have a plan. I guess to summarize my, my thought, have a plan. And if it's not college, 
it can be okay. How, how old are your children you, again, uh, Tasha? They're 11 and 13. Okay, now six years from now, let's all meet here again <laughs> in the same place. When little 11 and 13 year old Tasha kids are going to. <laughs> Mommy, I got a plan. Me, <laughs> me and Rupert are going to go live in a trailer and we're going <laughs> to sell. True. Like wood carvings know. over in Yosemite. Now that would yeah. be a no. Yeah, we want to. No. We want to be there. <laughs> it has to be solid. But yeah. I, I mean, here's the here's the issue. When we were okay, Charles and I are, are older. But when we were when we were younger, eighteen year olds, even though they were not that smart and weren't that bright, the world was simpler, and I think they were a little more mature. Today's 17 and 18 year olds are about as mature as yesterday's 14 year olds. Hmm. And, and the one thing that, you know, when you, when you tell a child you're going to school, it continues, it, it, it puts upon them a level of discipline and structure that even if they don't know what they want to do, it lays the foundation for them to become a structured, broadened human being. Wow. So... Not all, but I, but I would, but I would argue, yeah, I would argue above that. I think what's extremely valuable in a young person's life is mentorship. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I agree. With some that. people, some young people, don't know until they find a mentor and they see that mentor and they respect and mm -hmm. learn from that mm -hmm. mentor, yeah. and then they they're able to set their yeah. roadmap. So I think mentorship is yeah. an important aspect. And, and I just and want to add this to real find quick: a mentor is in college. But go ahead. <laughs> I promote college too. But um, one thing I do want to say is don't sit and do nothing. Yeah. yeah. Young yeah. people want to yeah. finish sometimes and do nothing. Play video games, not clean up your room, not wash dishes. Don't well, do Well, unless that's what they love, Marlena. <laughs> you can get paid don't on Don't listen Twitch. to Nick. Get paid. Don't listen get paid. to Nick. Don't be <laughs> sidetracked. Side do what you love. <laughs> that's right. Do what you love to do. I love but have video a plan, games. as Ms. But, Tasha said. But Count again, the cost coding, so that you can games, get paid. Uh, mm -hmm. Working on the internet makes money. Stop oh, that. Right. Yeah. See, I, you know, see, that's the thing. When we say, when we get real yeah. traditional on kids and you say, oh, you sit around and do video games, you know, they can give you a list as long as your arm of wealthy yep. video gamers. Yep. And when I say wealthy, I don't mean not six figures. Some yeah. of them seven figures. Yep. So, oh, yeah. but you team. have that argument out there. People say, oh, yeah, you're down on video games. Well, well, they're this not guy, writing the you know, video game, Chuck. They're just playing it. No, they have video not necessarily. Gamers. No, they have video yes. gamers who play it, mm -hmm. and people and watch they right. and stream it. Yep, yep. right. And, and they, they are money. making tons of money of other people. In fact, in fact, in fact, Apple just did their WWDC, their worldwide mm -hmm. de uh, uh, development mm -hmm. uh, conference, and in that keynote. Uh, Tim Cook and his colleagues said they hire kids. They hire young people that do video games to help them program their devices better. And they're making mm -hmm. money doing it. So, you know, you just have to How be prepared. Money? Oh, you oh. can make good money. Marlene about to pick up He's her game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's games. like, get physical therapy. <laughs> 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 right. And I even want to throw this in. My son is has autism. We, we, we all know that. And there's some things he cannot finish. But mm -hmm. there are companies that will pick him, pick him up, and pay him absolutely from eighty to a hundred grand just absolutely. for the way he thinks. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there, are, I think the core of the show is there are alternatives. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's right. Explore yeah. them. But, but, but we have to understand. We have to make sure that we're, we're differentiating between the alternative of making money, and the right. alternative mm -hmm. of building career or. Or right. building Prove the that. foundation Prove for that. a productive life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, because you don't because... want them to just live from hustles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just right. hustling. Okay. Yeah, they go GP again. I love it, GP. Ooh, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's good. I love it. Like, can you run that again? Can you run that one more time? Why not? <laughs> yeah, just run it one more time. It just, it just read through all those walls and explore the alternative. I mean, there are people yeah. who are on TikTok who are making money as influencers who they don't do anything. Hold on, Nick. Can you be quiet while while this? Is, <laughs> that is, that is. Well, by all means, <laughs> explore the alternatives. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Give, give us that. Give us that. Uh, voice that over for us, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Truck driving <laughs> is really the way to go. You <laughs> move around. Note, on a serious note, we want to give a huge congratulations to all of our high school graduates. Yes, yeah, yeah. my yeah. son, my son. Listen, yeah, yeah. if you know somebody. 
a cousin, brother, enemy, frenemy that you know that graduated, share this link with them because they need to hear this conversation sure. just to help them think and explore their possibilities and alternatives because we want everyone to get in on this conversation. And so it's not too late to share even after this episode ends to just help somebody else as mm -hmm. they journey through their life. So I turn it back over to Tasha and we'll keep rolling forward. All right. And I just wanted to say I did, uh, to the parents, because I know sometimes for our graduates, they feel like they don't have any choices because the parents have pretty much said, you're going to do this. Uh, yeah. So I, I do challenge our parents to listen, yeah. listen to what your graduate has to say. Sometimes they have done the research. Sometimes they do have mm -hmm. a plan. We hear them out. So yeah. just be open to the dialogue with your graduate. That's Especially all when they're 11 and 13. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's when you start you now, this. by the time they get to 18, they'll have a plan. That's, that's right. right. Got to start oh. early. I was about to say mute Nick in your, in your final. <laughs> in the final I'm, I'm coming no matter where I am, even if it's death. I'm coming back when, when her kids become 18. <laughs> okay. Find <laughs> out what happened. If I know, to see if Tasha's still listening to him, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll be retired, living yeah. off of their fortunes that they I have. Yeah. You, do you have a son? You have a son, Tasha? No, just two daughters. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so. That's looking. girl power. Girl power. <laughs> right? he, he, went, he went Santa <laughs> on you, <laughs> <laughs> Mom. Me and Jamal, we're going to move in together. <laughs> no. no, and we had those conversations. Oh, 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 no, no. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not part of the plan. Oh God. But no, this is. A great discussion thank you gp for leading out excellent um, excellent yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, this this is, is definitely something we, yeah. we need to talk about more yeah. you know with our graduates with our children and you know and, but can, uh, can i ask a question sure. if all of you could choose another career what would you what would you have wanted to be or what do you think you would have enjoyed other than the stellar careers that we all have working for Allegheny East Conference, which of course is incomparable and there's nothing that compares to that. But but if you could do something else, what might it have been? <laughs> underwater basket weaving. Headed... Oh, go ahead, Pat. <laughs> no, underwater basket weaving. No. Underwater basket <laughs> <laughs> Underwater. <laughs> so my intentions were to study business marketing and get my MBA and to go into healthcare administration and be a CEO at Advent Health. Oh, wow. You yeah, still really. wants to do that. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna say I, that. Well, I am yeah. doing what I loved. I prayed about that for a long time, and God showed me. And I love it. But preaching? Uh, no, physical therapy. Oh, 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 okay, okay, physical therapy. That was yeah, the first preaching? One. Like that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Then God told me to preach. I, I yeah, have yeah, word yeah. in that, but and I have word in that, but. Yeah, I think that, I would have done something yeah. in finance, like personal finance. I like that kind of thing. Oh, okay. I would have I would have done Chuck's job. Okay. Um, I I'd uh, drive the truck. Other than that, you know what? You know he's so persuasive about that truck drive. Yeah. I saw on reels this guy back in the truck <laughs> just yesterday that I was like, I need to get my CDL. That was yeah. so tight yeah. the way he backed that truck up in there. So, so I'm, I'm, you know, I did, if you research it, even for ladies, I mean, there are some amazing they are, female yes. truck, truck drivers out there that can the handle world, a 53 foot rig. Yeah, I've yes. seen I've seen them back into those trucking stops and they get out and they're just. Can you imagine? It's just amazing. Can you imagine Charles getting out of his truck on one of those one lane bridges? You will back your car up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I can more hear him on the CB. Uh, this is uh, smoke. Oh no, no, no! All I would have to do is sit in, sit in the in, in the in the cab and just yeah. uh, you know hit those more, diesel yeah. pipes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously though, I mean, don't don't be afraid of you know college education. Of of course, we all promote that you know yeah. no matter what discipline because it's not about it's not about learning what to think mm. yeah that's right learning how to think how to think right. yeah. Um, yeah yeah all right guys well we thank you once again for listening and watching the upset podcast if you want to share with us some of your thoughts on some of the things we mentioned um, email us at upset at aecsda.com. We're going to have a show in the future where we're kind of just reviewing some of the comments from you all um, from different shows. So oh, uh, feel free to let us know what you think. Uh, we always want to hear it. And we just thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a great week. And we'll see you next Sunday. The same Bye, time. Bye, guys.
blessed yep, week. Yep. Bye bye. And if you want your yeah. kids to go to school free, go to Kenya, where college is still free. <laughs> and on that note, bye bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>